Today we'll be looking at the year 2025 physics practical optics. This is the question we are going to look at. Please watch this video to the end. Watch this video to the end. And if there is any question or any place you don't understand or you have any contribution or comment, please feel free to drop it in the comment section. This is what I'm expecting. So I'm going to be preparing my students with this students you can watch through this video teachers you can use it and prepare your students as well this is from wire pass question i'm going to tell you the year and we'll then get our readings we'll do the practical using this get our readings fill up this table and then plot the graph we are going to plot the graph so i have three targets to do this practical and then fill up this table of values and plot this graph so if you do your own practical and you're getting something different or there are areas you still need assistance you can drop it in the comment section okay we have everything we need ready we have the glass block, the plan mirror, the optical pins, mathematical sets. So let's follow the instruction to get what the practical is all about. Okay, let's read through. I will read through from the past question, from wire past question, then we'll do it together. You are provided with a glass block, plan mirror, and optical pins. Place the glass block on a drawing sheet and trace its outline. So you trace the outline. That's the first thing we are going to do. A, B, C, D. As shown in the diagram above, remove the block, measure and record the width, W, of the block. We we'll measure the width of this block. Draw a normal O, N to this to DC, this is DC. We'll draw our normal. Please, when I'm drawing, watch to get how I'm getting the measurement at a point about one quarter the length of DC. The length of DC will then get one quarter of the. Draw a line making an angle I 10 degrees. That means that angle of incidence I for the first one will be 10 degrees. Okay. Then replace the block on its outline and mount the plane mirror vertically behind the block such that it makes good contact with the face. We'll be doing that. Stick two pins P1 and P2 on the line. You put two pins P1 and P2 on the line with the face AB. Stick two pins P1 and P2 on the line MO. Looking through the face CD, stick two other pins p3 and p4 you know that with this plane mirror it will be reflected back this way so we can say this is the refracted angle through the prism then coming back here so that we can have the emergent angle e then such that they appear to be in a straight line with images of p1 and p2 seen through the block so we put p3 and p for as seen through the block join p3 and p4 with a straight line and extend it to touch the face cd at o so once you get p3 and p4 the next thing is to extend it to touch cd at this point o prime this is o this is o prime then draw a perpendicular line from the midpoint of o o prime to meet a b at q once you get this point you draw a perpendicular bisector i'll show you the way to get it then draw it to meet a b at a point q then the next thing draw lines q draw lines from here to here and from this point to this point then measure and record theta that's you get theta e and d these are the things we need e d and theta we are going to get it evaluate 
evaluate m equals sine e this is after this we'll now go to this part so we we'll move to getting our m which will be sine theta and then we'll get n n which will be cos theta over 2 repeat the procedure for we'll do the same thing for 20 30 40 50 tablet your reading we we'll have it remember we need i e d i e d theta then sign e and cos theta over 2 so at the end we are to plot a graph with m on the vertical and n on the horizontal so graph of m against m m against m then determine the slope of the graph and evaluate q equals to ws state two precautions taken to ensure accurate results please you have to note the precaution explain the time refractive index and give a mathematical expression for it in terms of wavelength state the condition necessary for total internal reflection to occur for a given pair of media so before we go to this please let's go into the practical proper and then fill up our table of values okay, i'll start by tracing the outline but i'm going to trace the five outlines at once for the sake of speed let me trace the five outlines at once please once you trace the outline the five of them you complete it if there is a place you didn't finish up try and complete it up try and complete it then let me level a b a b c d a b c d for the five of them at once so that the video will not be too long for speed because i want to do the whole experiment then i will from here to here is 10 and remember we need one quarter that's 2.5 so i will bring out 2.5 Let me do the same for all of them at once. So I'm going to draw a normal, a normal, to draw a normal, make sure that this point coincides with this dotted 2.5 area. Then you come to 90 and mark it off and then join from here to that dotted line. You get and make sure that this line touches with this place as well so this is how I'm going to place it and mark out here make sure I join here to here to get the normal I'm looking for I'll do the same let to be fast let me work on all of them because i want us to get a reading that we are going to plot i know from the instruction that i've read you have idea but let's do it together and know what we are going to get if the values we are going to get if there are something we can plot So let me draw a normal NO. Then I will label here NO. The next thing to do is to get the first angle of incidence. The first angle of incidence. Remember, the first angle of incidence we have 10, then the next 20, 30, 40. So to get it, I'm going to place. I'm going to place this like this. 
and make sure that this tallies with the normal then i'll measure from here to here as my 10. from here that's how i'm going to place it but i must make sure that this night tallies with that normal and that this line is also in line with this ones and then this knot is in line with the point so that i can get from here then 20 30 40 and then 50. okay let me do for the first one i've marked out for 10. for sake of speed let me repeat the same thing okay let me start with the first angle of incidence from here to here from here to here which is 10. this is i which is 10. then i'll put my two pins please let the distance be apart and then put back the mirror put the mirror put the plain mirror let me use this and support it make sure it's okay guys if you have a, a mirror holder you can use it i'm using that as my mirror holder then i'll place p1 and p2 Then I want to get P3 and P4. I'm going to look for P3 and P4 from this other side. From this other side of the mirror. Remember, you close one eyes and check. So from this side, I'm going to view to get it make sure look through the block until you get a point where p1 and p2 are in a straight line i want a point where p1 and p2 are in a straight line once you get that point the next thing to do is to remove everything once you remove it you join it make sure you join the, the point join the point to touch join the point to touch cd you join the point to touch CD. Once it's touching CD, at that point, you draw another normal N prime O prime. That means you will take this protractor and make sure that this point touches that point on CD. Okay, now I will draw the normal. And label it M prime O prime. The next thing to do is to get the midpoint between n and o to get the midpoint that's the distance d the distance d let me measure it in cm 
I got D to be 0 0.6 cm. Now I will look for the midpoint of D and draw a perpendicular line. Let's say 0 0.3. So I'm going to draw a normal. To get your normal, once you place that dot, and make sure that these straight lines are all straight. Make sure that everything is straight. I will draw my normal 90. So I've gotten that midpoint. So what will I do? Join here and this point. That's N to Q. That's O N to Q. And join. The first one is very close because it's just 10. So the value we are getting is very small and close. And then here is your Q. So we are going to measure this angle, theta. Remember, this is for incident tray. When the incident tray is 10 degrees, then we'll have our D to be 0 0.6 cm. We'll get this imaging tray, this angle here, small angle here, is our E. We need it. Then we we'll need to get theta. Remember, we are going to fill the table. So, measuring this angle is very, very important. So, once I make sure that the normal is there, the one I'm going to put is make sure that this normal is here. You can see that here is from this place to this point, this angle that I'm measuring, the angle that I'm measuring, once you place it, the angle I'm measuring, this is five, six, seven, eight. So our theta here, I can write as eight degrees. That's what I got my theta as. I'll measure for the imaging tray. That's why all the perpendicular, the normal will be helpful in measurement. So the imaging tree here is 9. In fact, from here to here, from here to here, if you can see it well, it's 10. Then I will do the same thing for the 20 degrees. 